Now to the president, still overseas on his first foreign trip since taking office. He is due back in Washington tomorrow night, and when he gets there, the dark cloud of Russia investigations will be there to greet him. At the G7 summit in Sicily, the Italians putting on quite a show. President Trump wrapping up his eight-day foreign swing, meeting with leaders of the world's top economies. No longer accompanying him, his son-in-law and senior aide Jared Kushner, suddenly a key focus in the Russia investigation. Friday night, the Washington Post reporting that during the Trump transition, Kushner told Russia's U.S. ambassador that he wanted to establish a clandestine line of communication between the Trump team and the Kremlin. The Post says Kushner pitched using Russian equipment and secured lines, perhaps because he wanted to avoid U.S. surveillance. Now fired National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, reportedly a part of those talks. It's already been reported this week that Kushner is a subject of the FBI's investigation into Russia's meddling in the election. Though CBS News reports there is no sign that he's a target of the probe or that he's broken any laws. Also Friday, word that the president is considering a major shakeup of his staff once he gets back in town, assembling two different communications teams, one to handle the president's agenda, the other to handle questions about about the multiple Russia investigations. The Wall Street Journal reports the president's aides would also like the president's tweets to be approved by lawyers so that they don't, quote, go from the president's mind out to the universe. One congressman thinks that's a good idea. Because you've got foreign intelligence services watching how this person reacts in real time. They can do a huge profile on him, and that's information that we don't really want our foreign intelligence services to have. And also tonight, the Washington Post is reporting that the Senate Intelligence Committee has asked the president's political team to hand over all Russia-related documents, emails, and phone records going back to the campaign's launch in June of 2015.